what fascinates people is not only the fact that they see bicycles all over the place, but that it is possible. Until this road was open to bicycles, people, they came to Paris to see the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre, which is right there. But now they come to see Paris for the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre and the Rue de Rivoli, which is, 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 is like a miracle. I'm Dutch. I came from the Netherlands in the 90s. I decided to move to Paris to, to study philosophy, to do a thesis. Paris adopted a, uh, in 2015, um, a Réseau Express Vélo, a bicycle network just for Paris. And it's a very simple solution, only four lanes, 43 kilometers, not that much, one from north to south, one from east to west, and two along the River Seine. It's now almost uh, completed, and that put millions of people on a bicycle. Paris is the most densest city of Europe and the sixth densest city in the world, so a lot of people in very little space. I propose that we do a little bike ride uh, together to, to show you some things that I just uh, talked about. I'm gonna take you to you know, the Rue de Rivoli, which is right behind us. We're standing next to uh, the east-west bicycle lane of the Paris Bicycle Highway Network, and this is line one. And it's easy to recognize because of this yellow number one, because it's the equivalent of the yellow line number one of the metro network, which you can see on the map. This is my favorite story, because this is about the Rue de Rivoli. It's like a revolution, because this changed everything. Before, this used to be a six-lane car highway through the city from east-west. Then they created this bi-directional bicycle lane, you know, with just two directions. And then in 2020, early, when COVID hit us, uh, we needed a solution, and that's what the mayor of Paris said. I'm going to almost entirely transform this into the biggest uh, bicycle path in France to take up all the space for the bicycles, except for one lane that you see there, which is for cars, for uh, police, uh, for ambulance, uh, and taxis, and buses. That's it. And all the rest is for bicycles. So it is, it's almost like a miracle. And it, what's funny is that it took us some time for people to get used to it. For, because once they had gotten used to this bi-directional bicycle lane, it took, a, took them quite a while to get used to the idea that this was now going to be only for one direction that way, and the other lane for the direction in the other way. This is the heart of the heart of the heart of the Paris bicycle highway network. This is the intersection of the east-west uh, lane and the north-south lane. This is where it happens. If you would make a heat map, this would be super red. This would be purple because this is where all the people are coming. And this is just one meter in front of that intersection. And this is the Boulevard de Sébastopol. And as you can see, there's only one little bicycle lane. It's a two-directional bicycle lane. And it's really too small. So this little bi-directional bicycle lane transports more people than those three motorized lanes for cars next to it. This is more than 18,000 people per day, and those three motorized lanes is like 15,000 people per day. So the numbers, they justify that this is going to be made bigger, and that's what will happen. We're in survival mode here, we need to survive in this particular uh, bridge, but this is changing very fast. You'll see in, in 10 meters from here, we'll be on a fantastic cycling lane. This is in front of the parliament where uh, the French people is represented, where the decisions for our country are taken. And on, in April 2018, a member of parliament died on a bicycle because she was coming from that bridge. She wanted to go to her job and a lorry ran over her. And so one year later, we put up a phantom bike here, a ghost bike. Uh, to commemorate her, uh, her passing and also the fact that it was a very dangerous spot because by then there was no bicycle infrastructure here whatsoever. We decided to leave that bicycle on that spot until it would be uh, safe again. And that's what you see now. It has become the heart of the Paris cycling system. It's a two-way uh, huge uh, bicycle lane of the REV, the Réseau Express Vélo. And all these people are, you know, biking safely. And even here, look on the other side, this has become a huge bicycle lane. Before, there was nothing, just a line of paint. So we, as a bicycle association, we decided to protect ourselves with our bodies, like this. You see, these new cars stay there, the cycles are safe here. As you cycle through Paris, you see these signs underneath traffic lights. 
and that allows cyclists to go through at red light if nobody's coming. Many people, they do not like it, so they put stickers on it. And even, you see, there was an older sticker on it and it was taken away, a new sticker was, was, was stuck on it because, you know, people, they resist change. They don't like change, but of course, the change is going to come and it's going to be everywhere. You can go here with these temporary bollards. They're disappearing. This has become a you know, heritage. This is what got the bicycle revolution started. And here you see this access road that is used for parking, but it also has turned into a kind of a bicycle lane. The city got the authorization to administrate this, make people pay for it. Because until then, you know, there was not really that much of control. So people, they parked almost for free. And then people from that date on, I think it was 2018, they had to pay for it. And you look what happened. It's empty. It was like bicycle lanes, they appeared magically. Because <laughs> just because people had to pay for it. Yeah, I wrote a book uh, and there are already a lot of books about the bicycle uh, that tell you how to create space for the bicycle in the city. But I, what was missing, according to me, is a book that tells you how to make space for the bicycle in your head. Because the reason why there are you know, sometimes few bicycles in the city is because there's no space in the head for the bicycle. Because to have bicycle lanes, you first need to want them. And to want them, you need to understand them. Because we're still in that position in many countries, when you propose a bicycle lane, people, they say, well, we don't want it. Because it's new, because it's frightening, because whereas it's a solution for the problems that we have today, you know, densification, uh, climate change, uh, pollution, uh, you know, obesity, and all these kinds of problems. This is one of the last yellow bicycle lanes in the Paris, the Corona lanes. Before this used to be a no man's land, an open intersection with nothing in it. Very intimidating for cyclists, but now you look, we only have this bicycle lane in the middle of this intersection. It's crazy and it will change, but it's the beginning. It, this, this cycling path got people to cycle and to try it to bicycle. And as you can see, it works. And it's just the beginning of a new city where everybody can be safe on a bicycle. Whether you're a child or, a, or an elderly person, anybody can be free to ride a bicycle in safe conditions. It's an innovation because it's a delivery spot in between the space for the cars and the bicycle lane so that the car no longer needs to cut the bicycle lane to park and to, to deliver. He can stand there, take out his uh, products and then cross uh, the bicycle lane and then go and see the shop. the half full glass, I mean, and political courage to, to do these kind of things. And this political courage is here, it's both the mayor of Paris who decided to go for a cycling city, and also the, the boss of this region, uh, which is a political opponent, but she also decided to go for the bicycle, so everything is going in the right direction, and you need the citizens to actually ask for it, and when you get these those things together, you, you, you get the city moving.